Every so often in the history of Call of Duty, a title introduces a new feature that is generally considered something pretty good when we look back at it, whether that be a feature that allowed for more customization in a creative class, or whether that was something that allowed you to change the entire meta of a gunfight, there have been some things that, at the end of the day, turned out alright. But some of those ended up being met with some initial heavy criticism and a lot of hatred. So today we're going to be taking a look at seven different features within COD history that were initially hated by fans, but that for the most part seem relatively positive. Now, of course, these are all dependent on your own perspective and point of view. You may not agree with some of these, and if not, that's totally fine. And feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below of something you did not like at launch, but then maybe came around to at some later point in time. But that said, let's talk a little bit about these things that players initially didn't like all that much. Number one of this list in no particular order goes back to the golden days of COD if you want to consider them that, that being with Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 introduced a lot of cool things and offered up a lot of the iconic moments of COD history, but one thing that players initially did not like because it was such a deviation from the standard unlocks that we had seen before were the original COD points. Now, for those of you guys that remember how COD points worked, you still ranked up the same, you still unlocked things and had the ability to end up getting these weapons all the same, but you had to actually purchase them with the in-game currency called COD points. Now, for a variety of different prices, you could end up getting the weapons or equipment or camos even of your choice, and it didn't necessarily require you to go in sequential order. So you could end up getting these on a more customizable basis. The interesting part also with COD points was that there were things called wager matches and contracts that you could utilize in which you could end up maximizing your return by either placing a little bit of a bet on how you thought you'd do in game or by trying to complete a specific challenge via contracts in which it would give you a little bit more in return for what you purchased it. The more you played, the more you ranked up, and the more you got COD points, then the more you could end up utilizing and unlocking in your game of Black Ops back in the day. Now, whereas it's probably more so fondly looked at now is because, well, COD points as we know them now are not exactly the same as they were back in the day. COD points now are the in-game currency, which is the equivalent of your real-life money that you have to put in to end up getting those things. So you have to pay your physical money to get your customization items, or in some cases, even end up having a random chance of getting your items depending on the game you're playing. Whereas COD points back in the day were simply just earned by grinding the game and had no real life affiliation. Unfortunately, as it stands now, the COD point system from Black Ops 1 more than likely won't ever make its return within Call of Duty, but when we look back, we can remember some simpler times. The second thing we'll discuss here in this video is a little bit newer of a change and one that was one of the original catalysts for me wanting to do this video idea in the first place, that being a manual health regeneration within Black Ops 4. Love it or hate it on how Black Ops 4 has been supported thus far, some of the core gameplay mechanics of Black Ops 4 were a deviation from some of the fundamentals that we had known in Call of Duty previously, of that being the manual health regeneration. Previously in COD, and only with some slight variables of the duration, health regeneration would kick in about 5 seconds after you ended up taking damage, and only if you ended up not taking any more damage. So in a lot of cases within games, you could end up being shot and theoretically say, go 4 seconds without taking any damage, but then you took a little bit of fall damage, it would then negate that and start it all over, but Black Ops 4 looks to take that fundamental and turn it upside down and put it on its head. Instead of having to wait for those 5 seconds and then the 3 seconds are sometimes instantaneous depending on the game again, whichever you were in and how much health you had at that point of taking damage, instead of having a wait period, Black Ops 4 introduced the ability for you to negate that entirely and start your regeneration yourself, which has prompted a swift change in the meta of gunfights. You can now back out and immediately challenge a gunfight again, having taken those 2 seconds to immediately regen your health instead of having to wait the comparable, say, 7 or 8 seconds to having to jump back into the fight. And so, therefore, it creates a little bit more of a skill gap to a game that otherwise doesn't really have all that much. Players can know when to utilize if they have their right equipment in place, when they should use that health regeneration, and it ultimately lets the player be more so in control of their own fate rather than just, say, the random timing of when a player may push them to when they may have taken damage last. Now, as for Black Ops 4's health system, that might be a different story for a different day, and one that fans might not have turned as much around on compared to the manual regeneration. The third thing we'll talk about might test your memory a little bit, depending on how long you've been in the community, but this then predates Black Ops 2 entirely. This is being something that up until Black Ops 2, we had what was initially the 357 kill streaks of World at War, being the recon plane, artillery strike, and dogs. And then a year earlier, we had the UAV, the airstrike, and attack chopper. But then after that, we got into the customization and a lot more items up on deck for what was available for kill streaks. However, introduced Black Ops 2, and it changed that again fundamental basic of kill streaks on its head. At the time, Treyarch was the first to introduce score streaks, not necessarily just 
kill streaks. This opened the game up to a much more casual or otherwise objective level of play that allowed for people that may not go on those larger kill streaks to also get involved with the fun, but also then help contribute to the overall team victory that ultimately game modes like Domination are primarily built for. Though they might be in some cases better for the Slayers, the game modes themselves at their core stress team-based play and also go for the victory. So even those players that look to cash in on that got their hands at some of the score streaks, but if you played both, well, of course, that's when you maximized it. As well, on a competitive side, it changed the entire meta of professional play. You ended up having the ability to, again, go for those streaks. It created in the newly formed game mode in particular, things like hill hopping for hard point, which you can then farm score for your streaks and then try to get them as fast as possible. Ultimately, score streaks were a more so inclusive way to bring all players into the fold for score streaks, but it hasn't been something that's gone away since. Initially, it was met with some pushback in something that players weren't initially too fond of, but it's been something that's not only been accepted, but also become the norm. Next up on this list is still something that is rather controversial depending on who you ask, that being DLC weapons. First introduced within Black Ops 2, the Peacekeeper coming along with the DLC pack, Revolution being tied in with the map pack itself, and then coming along with those that decided to end up getting that, and then later evolving into things from Ghosts, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, Infinite Warfare, and so on and so forth, until here we are today, when DLC weapons are so common that we get multiple of them each event, drop. Now, while it is a very valid criticism to say, well, why aren't these weapons available at launch? The general shift in the gaming industry as compared to just, say, simply putting out a product as 10 years ago to now more so a service-based and keep players as engaged as possible has tried to offer more and more content each year over, depending on which game you may be looking at, to keep players as involved as possible. Now, sure, while those earlier weapons could probably be shipped at launch with the game, but later DLC weapons are, in my mind, no contention that they were created after the game itself launched and are a way to give more post-launch content than just say your standard maps you'd have to wait previously multiple months to get in those larger intervals. Now where they're initially hated more so for being a sort of aspect of pay to win, that's something that they've now been generally more accepted not only as content to keep players more engaged and coming back every so often compared to not, but also just from a sheer statistical standpoint, they've pretty much been proven in the most case to be more so just middle ground weapons that are on par with others that if you want to use them, sure you can stand a chance in a gunfight but if you don't want to or you don't have them, you're not going to be really missing out on anything. They're still outclassed by plenty of weapons out there, and therefore they're kind of just middle of the pack weapons that are offered to give a little bit more customization to how you want to play the game. The next thing we'll talk about is, again, something that comes back to just more so being loved as their retrospective looks at the time, they weren't really loved at all. That again, dealing with DLC weaponry and DLC content for sale, we're gonna be stemming back to the first introduction here of this. We mentioned the Peacekeeper being a part of the Revolution DLC pack within Black Ops 2, but back then, players were genuinely concerned about pay to win. And these weapons that were introduced, save for the Peacekeeper, you had a couple within Call of Duty Ghosts and then one or two in Advanced Warfare. The Peacekeeper was tethered with DLC, but the others were actually available a la carte. So you could buy them individually in the stores for each of those games. So you had things like, say, the Ripper or the Maverick A1 and A2 available for a couple of bucks each. There was no strings attached to that. You could just simply buy an expansion weapon for the price designated right there. And they were relatively cheap in the grand scheme of things. But that all changed come Advanced Warfare when supply drops and random chance started to generate massive amounts of revenue for Activision. And thus, we have not seen any system that gives players a weapon up front and for a very cheap cost outside of grinding for multiple hours on end since Advanced Warfare, which again, ironically, was the last time we saw that a la carte feature, but also introduced a system that would then later phase that out. The second to last thing we'll talk about in this video also once again tests your memory a little bit. If you remember back to once again Black Ops 2, the Pick 10 system was introduced as a brand new way to customize your ability to play the game. Now beforehand, we ended up having preset attachments, we ended up having preset perks of each class. You had basically one of everything you could designate in your class setup. However, with the Pick 10 system, it allowed for pretty much your own way to do it. You could load up on attachments, you could load up on perks, you could load up on a little bit of everything, but it really just came down to how you wanted to utilize your class setup with a total of comparably 10 points that you could use each item costing one point with some overboarding features such as additional attachments costing one extra for those wildcard slots that would allot you the ability to get those extra things. But the pick 10 system has since revolutionized the way that we look at the create a class system within Call of Duty. However, initially it was met with some pushback because it was such a conventional and fundamental change.
change to what we knew within Call of Duty up until that point. Being that everything was sort of standard guaranteed, it was a little bit of a breakaway and divergence that players weren't necessarily used to, but over time, they ended up getting a little bit more used to it, and that pick 10 system is often now referred to as the gold standard of the creative class functionality. Running out this video, we're going to talk about one that is rather overlooked in most cases, but that being Infinite Sprint. Introduced widely with the Call of Duty games of the Jetpack era, if you want to call them that, as of recent years, those titles have included the ability to have Infinite Sprint. You don't have a cooldown where you have to take a few seconds to walk without the use of a perk to negate that. As a result, this has drastically increased the pace of the game, and therefore, when you take a look at, say, Black Ops 4, not necessarily in terms of the gameplay and specialists and things like that that generate the core makeup, but simply the pace of the game is drastically different than, say, compared to Black Ops 2. Initially, it was met with some pushback because of that exact reason that it made the pace a little too fast, and for some players, it became a little unbearable, but as it has become a staple over the last couple of years, the necessity to sacrifice parts of your creative class, where as a perk would be designated to keep that infinite sprint has become something players have become accustomed to as of recent years. So much so that even World War II, as of the past year's title, initially launched with a sprint cooldown, but then as the division overhaul was something that was removed and infinite sprint was re-added into Call of Duty World War II after that. But that about wraps it up here with this list of seven things that players initially hated, but then came around to relatively enjoy or maybe even love. So that said again, none of this is in any way, shape or form a definitive list of things you may have something you'd like to add to this list you may think that some of these things on here you really enjoyed from the very beginning but that said let me know your thoughts in the comments down below is there anything that you would add to this list maybe subtract whatever it may be feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things call of duty anything relating to black ops 4 in particular especially as of right now multiplayer blackout and zombies we got you covered the best of all that so if any of it interests you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. There's the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. Well, that's it now out of the way. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Mine is an espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.